What's going on? Uh, this is 139. Um, this is a movie review for the movie Star Wars The Phantom Menace, Episode 1. I said I was going to do this a while ago in my, uh, I think it was my Rise of Skywalker review. I mentioned that I was going to do all the Star Wars movies. Um, I have Disney+. Plus. I am uh, going to be, you, you know... Watching everything I want to watch on that and then deleting it just because I feel as though if we support each freaking company getting their own streaming service, we're going to have to pay for 39 different streaming services. So I really don't want to support it. However, when there's things like Star Wars 4K on there and The Mandalorian and all the Marvel movies, kind of want to watch that shit. So I'm going to get it and get rid of it. Anyway, um, Star Wars The Phantom Menace, Episode 1, came out in 1999. Um, I am a prequel baby. I was born in the mid-90s, so obviously I wasn't in the theater for this one, but, um, I remember it fondly as a kid. I remember playing, uh, the pod racer level in the, in the Lego Star Wars saga. I love that shit. Um, Qui-Gon Jinn's all, one of my favorite Jedi. Um, so I have a soft spot for the, for the, the not only this one, but for the rest of them. Um, however, I do know, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be telling you they're amazing. I, I understand that they're really not. Some of them are really, the, I'm not going to say it, but all right, mostly Attack the Clones is, I don't like that. That one sucks. <laughs> this one I don't think is the best, but I think it's decent. Um, and I wanted to test that by watching it again. And in the end, yes, I agree. It's not the best, but it's decent. Um, it's actually a rather self-contained story. Uh, within the Star Wars universe, um, definitely starting things up here, um, you know, you get in, introduced to uh, Anakin Skywalker, um, who of course uh, becomes a, a Jedi Knight, um, and then becomes Darth Vader, uh, way down the line. Um, you get introduced to Obi Wan Kenobi, who's a ser you know my personal favorite Jedi. I think a lot of pe people's favorite Jedi and character within the universe. Um, Qui-Gon Jinn, Yoda, every, everyone, um, you get introduced to the Jedi Order themselves, really, uh, the Senate, the Council, the Jedi Council, um, the Republic, and how that works, a little bit into that, um, the Force, and, uh, the Sith, how there's only two of them, and they were thought to be extinct, but guess what, turns out, they're back in this one. Uh, and holding the uh, Sith flag would be the Darth Sidious, um, who's introduced in this, as well as Darth Maul, who is Sidious's apprentice. Um, Darth Maul, you know him as the red faced with the horns. He's from Dothamir. He's got a dual blade lightsaber, really cool saber. Um, and he is he's you know really freaking awesome. Anyway, movie starts out with a, uh, a little dispute between the Trade Federation and a planet called Naboo. Um, they're blocking any trade into Naboo. Um, they're trying to keep it on the down low that they're actually invading, and they're in cahoots with the Sith Lord, Darth Sidious, who is unknown at this point by any of the Jedi or any of the Republic. Um, they're going to invade, and... Basically, do the 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 Sith Lord's bidding, um, whether it be by fear or promise of power or whatever. I'm sure it has something to do with both. Um, and the current Chancellor, Supreme Chancellor, who's the leader of the Republic, the leader of basically the good guys, as as they're portrayed, um, sends two Jedi Knights, Obi Wan and and Qui Gon Jinn, to negotiate and basically free up the. Free up the blockade so Naboo can continue trading and uh, get all that out of there. But it ends up taking a turn for the worst as the, the two Jedi sense something greater. Um, they are actually attacked by the Trade Federation. Um, unfortunately, they can't you know deal with it just themselves. Two Jedi against the whole you know army, basically. Um, they hitch a ride on one of the ships down to Naboo, where the invasion was going to be going on. They run into a character called Jar Jar Binks, who is, you know, if you've watched my, uh, Clone Wars series, or, you know, review, um, you'd know he's not really my favorite character, 
nor is he a lot of people's favorite characters. Um, uh, yeah, he's in this. He's he's not the he's not horrible. He's worse than Clone Wars in my opinion, but he's still pretty weird and awkward in this. Um, anyway, they run into him and uh, they end up after they go down under under the water to the Gungan City, which is actually really cool. Um, they get to Naboo. Um, at this point, the the invasion has already been, you know, it's already happened, so not really much they can do. Um, they, they're able to get the princess, or the queen, I'm sorry, the queen of Naboo out of there um, on some ships. And they end up in Tatooine, where you, you end up being in a big side quest almost type thing. Along the way on this planet you meet Anakin Skywalker who at this time is a slave with his mom Shmi Skywalker. Um, they're slaves. They are owned by Watto uh, who's this flying elephant creature. He's really ugly as fuck but he's funny looking. Um, and they apparently don't have any credits that are transferable in this on this planet. They don't take Republic credits. I, it, it's out of the this planet is out of the Republic's uh, reach, I guess. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, so they don't accept Republic credits in order to get the parts they need for their ship because it was damaged during their escape. They need different currency to buy the parts. Um, now, this to me is kind of bullshit because ha you're telling me that they can't just somehow contact someone in the Republic or pay or, or steal a ship if you have to i mean watch the clone wars there's that stuff happens all the time commandeering ships and shit like or even just take it from Watto. he's kind of an asshole or, or whatever just you know what i mean like you can justify it some way um and you all you have to do is take a ship and then transport or, or even steal the parts i i just feel like in, in a lot of other star wars media they've done things like that before they just steal people's shit or whatever because it's for the greater good this entire planet is, is going to be, you know, invaded and, and people killed and, you know, maybe possibly slaves taken and all this kind of stuff. I mean, I feel like you should you should steal a ship in that situation if you really have to. If you can't communicate with the Republic, which I would be really hard. It, it, I don't really know that, like, even if there's not somebody on that planet or, or, or like, in the Republic, maybe you can have somebody who knows someone close by in the Republic, and, like, you could figure it out. I, I just don't really understand why they go to this extreme. The extreme they go to is have Anakin race in a pod race for the money to for the parts. So they were betting on a, I think he's, like, 9 or 8 or 9-year-old winning a pod race, um, which he's never won or even completed a race before, <laughs> to... Um, to win this money for the parts and also guarantee his freedom as well, which works out. But still, it's just like, hmm, really? <laughs> I mean, I guess you could argue Qui-Gon doesn't really follow the rules and he f goes along with his feelings. I guess you could argue that. And he the whole time he's saying, you know, this was not a mistake. Meeting your son, he's talking to Shmi or whatever, was not a mistake. Um, so maybe, like, you could say he he knew the whole time somehow. But I don't know. I just feel like... It's a little convenient, a little flaky for them to say the only possible way. We are, you know, we are so screwed that the only way is to bet everything on this kid. Because they bet the ship on the kid. So, I mean, you know, there's you're going to get rid of your ship and everything in it. Well, I don't know about everything in it. But it's just the only place of um, safety is the ship. And you're going to bet it on the kid. I don't know. It's just a little flaky in my opinion. And it goes on very long. Um, there's a it goes on really long. I don't. I actually like the pod race. I think the pod race is really cool. I really. I've always liked the pod race part. It's just the build up to the pod race part takes really long. Like there's a lot of scenes of them inside, you know, Shmi's house, just you know talking. There's scenes of like Anakin building the the pod. It's just like it just takes. It's too long. There's scenes of them arguing with Watto. Like it, it's just like clip, you know, maybe ten minutes of that out and add something else, inject something else. Uh, it's just it's too long. Um. So anyway, the pod Anakin wins the pod race, which is a really cool scene. Um, I really like the pod race. It's very it's the CGI looks really good. The explosions look really good in my opinion. Um, and it, it's it's you know 
it's a really I think, just think it's a really cool scene it's worth it's worth being in the movie I wouldn't want them to clip that at all or anything like that I really like the pottery scene so they win um, Qui-Gon also wins Anakin's freedom however his mom Anakin's mom has to stay behind um, Anakin goes with them to Coruscant um, and then there's another scene where you know the the uh, chance the chancellor is all hung up with like the bureaucrats and it takes forever for them to make a decision and and the queen is there because they want to they she wants them to act now because people are dying on her planet and you know then the vice or the uh, representatives for the trade federation are saying you don't have any proof and then it's like well can you provide proof she's like no I want to do it now I'm not waiting for you guys to decide it on a committee and then she votes for uh, she ha does a vote of no confidence, which really, I guess, they really explain it much. I'm assuming they re-elect somebody. I'm not sure if it's just one person says it. They have to re-elect it. That's kind of what it seemed like, but that's a little ridiculous because she says, I vote for, or I have a vote of no confidence or something like that. And then um, Palpatine's whispering in her ear. He's like, now they'll elect a new chancellor. I'm like, wait, what? Just for one person? There's like thousands of people here and it's just one person doesn't like them and then they reelect. Um but anyway, they elect Palpatine. So the whole time he was in her ear saying, you know, oh, the, he's stuck with the bureaucrats and I'll, I'll if it were me, I would do this and so it ends up he gets elected. Um he's now the chancellor, the supreme chancellor. Um as he is in the the, the next movie, the next two movies as well. Um A.K.A. Darth Sidious. I'm not really spoiling anything. This is like, you know, this movie particularly is 21 years old. And there's, the other ones are like 50 years old. <laughs> um, holy shit, are they really that old now? 70, I think it came out in 78. Is that the new hope? So that's, no, it's like 42 years old. Um, anyways, uh, he's elected chancellor. And, uh... She's, like, a little pissed about it, and she ends up going back to Naboo. They form an alliance with the Gungans, who I mentioned earlier, Jar Jar Binks is a Gungan, the annoying character. Um, and they form an alliance. Uh, there's a little bit of a Gungan versus droid fight, which is kind of cool. It's kind of stupid, honestly, because Jar Jar's just fucking around the whole time. Most of the screen time is about Jar Jar, like, falling and stuff, and somehow killing them. I don't... It's kind of... It, 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 a little bit entertaining, but it's also kind of stupid. Maybe if there was a little more, like, actual scenes of Gungans fighting the droids instead of just the whole time it's Jar Jar falling, I would like it better. But, I mean, it was cool. They have these giant, almost like dinosaur creatures that emit a giant shield over the whole army. And, of course, the uh, the droids had their tanks and everything out and, uh, you know, giant masses of droids. Um, so it was cool. A cool scene, like a scenery, like a whole, it was set up well, but it, unfortunately it was all just Jar Jar falling. So that kind of took away from it a lot. And while that's happening, um, the, basically, like, the people, the, Naboo's, Naboo's a pretty peaceful uh, planet. So they don't have really like much of an army. So, but but whatever they do have is also ambushing the droids that are left behind um, at like the palace or, or the main city, um, and they're trying to go capture the viceroy. So they end up doing so. Um, and uh, and while this is all happening, Anakin is in a <laughs> is is sitting in a cockpit like Qui Gon told him to, and he presses a button and ends up going an autopilot to the fight. And, you know, he actually ends up inside the freaking, uh, inside the trade, the, uh, what is it, uh, Trade Federation, I don't know what it would be called, hub, it's not really a starship, it's kind of like a floating space station, I guess you could say, and he blows it up from inside, um, and he escapes, so it's, it's kind of funny, actually. A lot of people hate on Baby, or not Baby, but like, you know, young Anakin. I really don't, I, in my opinion, he's grown on me. At first, I, like, not at first, but, you know, a few years ago, I was like, yeah, he's really annoying. But now I'm like, hey, he's all right. You know, like, I mean, at least in the, a little bit in the beginning, he's kind of annoying. But, like, he get he, you know, he, he kind of grows on you, in my opinion. He grew on me. I don't really, he doesn't bother me anymore. Um, so I don't mind the scenes with him in it. Um, but he, yeah, he blows the whole freaking ship up, which... Uh, makes this makes all the droids lose uh, power and they all fall, so the Gungans are free. 
Um, and they captured the Viceroy already, the Padme and her crew did. Uh, and then it's, um, it's Darth Maul shows up and he fights Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon, two on one. Um, and he ends up after a, a real, some really cool fighting, in my opinion, a lot of, I, I really like the prequel fighting. There was a stupid, all right, my friend, he's kind of an idiot, okay? He watches a lot of movies, don't get me wrong, but he, like, he just wants to love everything, so he'll make excuses for everything. When we saw The Force Awakens, he was trying to tell me that this, that that fighting was better than the prequel fighting, because the prequel fighting was um, over, what did he say, over choreographed or something? I think that's what he said. He's, it was basically arguing it was too much, like, you know, too much acrobatics and that type of stuff. And he just preferred, like, in in the in the Force Unleashed, I mean, or the Force Awakens, I, I guess I understand Rey is very raw, obviously. I mean, but Kylo should have kicked her ass in a second anyway. So they, if they're going to make me think this fight is legitimate, why are they both fighting, like, t like ten year like me and my best friend when we were ten playing with lightsabers? And he was arguing that that fighting was better than the prequel fighting. I was like, are you serious? The prequel fighting is so much better. Yes, it's very choreographed. Why is that bad, though? Why is... It's like... Why, why is something being choreographed bad? That, it just means they worked harder on it, and it's more impressive, in my opinion. Um, but I, I love the prequel fighting, and it, it, it's, it stands up here. I mean, the Darth Maul... Especially the Darth Maul versus uh, Obi-Wan fight after Qui-Gon's dead, after he gets stabbed, well, he's not dead, but he gets stabbed, is just really freaking awesome, I've rewatched it multiple times, and even here, I watched it, like, four or five times, just rewinding it and watching it again, just because it's, like, you can even tell by Obi-Wan, like, he's, like, hyped up when he's waiting behind the racials, he's, like, jumping like this, and then he goes out, and he's, like, he jumps in midair, and it's, like, Superman, you know, slashes him, like a Superman punch, he, like, slash with a lightsaber, and you can just feel the emotion from Obi-Wan as, Qui-Gon's dead because uh, Darth Maul actually kills Qui-Gon one-on-one, -on -one, no, you know, no uh, bullshit involved. He just absolutely kills him. Um, Obi-Wan at the time is stuck behind ray shields, which is also kind of stupid because you can easily, uh, the ray shield, obviously, of course, you can't go through a ray shield, but there's, there's emitters for the ray shield that fire the ray shield out. All we had to do, if, unless I'm mistaken, somebody please tell me, is carve area around the ray shield, then the ray shield emitter will fall and it'll break the ray shield. So if you really wanted to, if I, any of them really wanted to, they could just carve it out and go through. You know what I mean? Like if Obi-Wan wanted to help Qui-Gon in the one-on-one -on -one versus uh, Maul, he could easily just, you know, break through the ray shield. Or, I mean, it's like the scene in the Clone Wars. I mean, Anakin's pretty fucking powerful, but Anakin's just like breaking shit all over the place. Like, I feel like... Obi-Wan could probably break through that, or, or Maul, or Qui-Gon, if they wanted to, but, anyway, it's cool, it's, it's, a, it's a monkey wrench thrown into the equation, which is cool, but it's just, like, it's not really earned, though, um, kind of like the pod race, it's like, I mean, it's cool, but there's so many other ways they could have went about this, that this is a bit ridiculous, you know what I mean, um, so, anyways, Qui-Gon gets killed one-on-one uh, -on -one by Maul, and then once the ratio, I, I guess they're on timers, I don't know, that's not really explained either, it's like 30 seconds and it, it releases and Obi-Wan can run in. Um, there's some of the best fighting in the whole series right there, um, and Obi-Wan actually, it, it looks like he uses his anger, which is very interesting. I mean, Obi-Wan is, is in this at this point, still a Padawan, he's on the verge of becoming a Jedi Knight, like he's, he's pretty much done his training at this point. But it looks like he's using his anger, which is easy to, you know, easy to use your anger when your master is dead right there, and you're what you just watch your master die. But it's not the Jedi way, and o Obi Wan has always been preaching to Anakin, you know, throughout the Clone Wars, throughout Episode two and three, that you know you can't use your anger. It's not the Jedi way. You can't be so emotional and all that. It's very interesting because it really looks like you can see him gritting his teeth about how angry he is at, at Maul. Um, and he's definitely using his anger. And that and that could be why he kind of gets bested a little bit. At first, Maul seems to be overwhelmed with him. Um, and then Obi-Wan, you know, seems to be a bit reckless. And he gets, I believe, an elbow to the face or a, maybe a kick. And he flies off uh, down a hole, but he catches this, like, 
I don't know what the purpose of the thing is, but it's like something poking out of the wall, and he grabs onto it, so he's holding on. Maul's basically toying with him at this point. He's got his saber. Oh, Obi-Wan cuts his double saber in half, by the way. I forgot to mention that, which is really cool, by the way. Cuts it in half, kicks him in the face. <laughs> um, but Maul has his single saber now. His thing's cut in half. Toying with him, slicing at the ground, you know, flicking ashes at him, basically. Obi-Wan sees, well, he knows Qui-Gon's saber is there. So he decides to pull himself up, grab the saber midair, and just slice uh, Maul in half. Now, I don't know why Maul didn't, like, it took Maul forever to figure this out. And even when <laughs> Obi-Wan flipped behind him, he could have easily blocked it or killed Obi-Wan in midair or something. Um... It's actually kind of similar to the high ground jump from episode 3. goes right over him, where <laughs> Maul could have easily sliced Obi-Wan's legs off if he wanted to. But he didn't. He just stands there like this, like basically like this, with his you know, arms at his sides, you know, kill me. And Obi-Wan slices him in half, and he falls down the shaft in half. Clearly he lives, but at this point I thought he was dead back in the day. I thought he was done. Um, and... Yeah, that, you know, at this point, the Viceroy's captured. Um, the Gungans, they lost, but they kind of won because all the droids were deactivated. And the the Sith apprentice, that they didn't know if he was the Lord or the apprentice at this point, um, is dead they, in, their, in their thoughts. They thought he's dead. So, you know, everything was won at that point. The Chancellor is now the, or uh, Palpatine is now the Supreme Chancellor. Um, which at that point they thought was good, but clearly it ends up being bad, but... In this movie, they think it's good, and that's how it ends. Obi Wan, or uh, yeah, Obi Wan is uh, becomes a Jedi Knight and takes on uh, Anakin as his apprentice because that's what Qui Gon wanted. Qui Gon wanted to take on um, Anakin as his apprentice due to his uh, metachlorine count being higher than any Jedi ever. Um, the Council didn't want that to happen because they couldn't see into his future. They said his future was clouded. Which it's clear is why it was clouded, I guess. And he was too old was a stupid excuse they tried. Dread use as well. I don't really know how he's that old when I'm watching the Clone Wars and there's like, you know, seven or eight little guys about the same age. Um, but they didn't want it. However, it ends up happening. Um, so Obi-Wan is now Anakin's master. Qui-Gon's dead. Er, Obi-Wan's now a Jedi Knight. Darth Maul, in their eyes, is dead. The Chancellor is now Senator Palpatine. Um, the Naboo is free of the, the Trade Federation suppression. And, uh, yeah, that's where we're at in the galaxy. So, they know there's always two. Always two Sith. And they don't know if that was the Lord or the Apprentice. So, um, it's kind of the start of something, obviously, bigger. Uh, overall, the movie, you know, it had some good parts. Like, the fighting... Uh, obviously, the, the Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon versus Darth Maul was, is one of my favorite fights in the whole Star Wars, you know, I guess, series, whatever you want to call it, um, property, whatever. <laughs> um, and the pod race, I really enjoy, too. Um, and I, 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 there's some characters I really like. I really like Obi-Wan, as I you know. I really like Qui-Gon. But I, I, it's not just because I like them because I, I remember them as a kid. I genuinely think they're good characters. Um, I think Qui-Gon's an intriguing character with him uh, being, you know, being a master, having the ability to be on the council if he wants. However, he just likes to do his own thing and goes. And he's, he's, he's a bit of, of a... A bit of an Anakin, but way less reckless, obviously. Um, maybe more like an Ahsoka. He's, he's very, he's very um, calm, collected. Um, however, he just doesn't, you know, adhere to everything the Council wants. Um, and he's very respected, but, you know, just because of that, he gets on the Council's nerves. You can tell by Yoda when, when Yoda says, Qui-Gon's defiance, I sense in you. That you do not, you know, need that you do not, or whatever he's, however he says it. Um, you can tell that they're frustrated with Qui-Gon's antics, but at the same time, they realize his, you know, abilities. Um, I think that's really cool. He's he's very, in, he's independent, I guess, in that way. I, I think he's an intriguing character. Um, and Obi-Wan, obviously one of my favorite characters, but it's really cool to see him uh, as a young, a young Jedi and kind of see him, 
I don't want to say imperfect because in in two and three he's like basically perfect in my opinion. Like he's like the perfect Jedi. Um, and in this one, he's, he's not really the perfect Jedi. As you kind of see, in my opinion, I think he's using his anger a little bit. He's also questioning his master. It's just very interesting to see how, you know, see Anakin is, and, and, and some of his flaws and, and maybe how Qui-Gon instilled in him, you know, to be calm and collected, yet also lets Anakin off the hook with a lot of things. It's just interesting. Um, so they're great characters. Uh, the Queen is kind of a good character, I guess. Queen Amidala, Padme, whatever you want to call her, Senator Amidala, eventually. Um, she's an R.A. character. <laughs> it's goofy how her voice is, like, suddenly, oh, it's, uh, we need to send the Jedi to the Council to discuss the peace talks. Like, <laughs> she talks normal, and then suddenly when, when it's like, oh, she's the Queen, hello, my name is Queen Amidala, I think it's funny. Um, she's okay. I, I always liked her gun. Her gun, her little pistol thing. I thought that was cool. It makes cool noises like, wow, wow. I like that little thing. Um, she's an RA character. Uh, obviously Maul is a really cool character. In this, we don't really get to hear much from him. I think he, he doesn't even, uh, he says one thing about at last having the revenge. Um, obviously at this point we don't know what the revenge is, uh, because all that would be predating even the Clone Wars, or this episode here, uh, I guess you'd have to read some lore for that. Um, obviously, there's a reason why they're, the Sith are extinct. I'm assuming the Jedi beat them. <laughs> so, that's probably what he's talking about when he says revenge. Um, and Jar Jar Binks is a terrible character. Uh, very annoying. Really just comedic relief that was unnecessary. He didn't, he didn't make the movie any better. Some of the drier parts, you know, he didn't... I'm assuming that's what he was trying to be there for. It didn't really help much. Um, a lot of the characters just kind of ignored him. Didn't really play off of his quirkiness either. So, I don't know. It, it, he just didn't work for me. Um, not a big fan of him. Especially in the Clone Wars, as I've said before. Um, but yeah, there, there, there was also some pretty boring parts. Like... The, like all the build up on Tatooine, you know, the, the negotiating for the parts and the um, the hanging out in in uh, Anakin Skywalker's little hut thing. Like it's it's like too much, you know. It's too long. Obviously, you can have a couple snippet of that, but I, I, it's just too much. Um, you know, Anakin getting made fun of of his friends for a couple minutes. It's just like little scenes that add up, and it's just like, all right, you know, do we really need this? You know, and that really chips into the to the movie, and and you could be putting cooler things in there, or um, maybe just more interesting things because it really drags. Um, it drags in the Tatooine part for sure, and it also drags in that whole part of uh, um, Senator or um, not Senator uh, Queen Amidala. You know, debating with the with the Republic on whether or not they're gonna do anything about the Trade Federation's invasion. It's just you know, I've never been a fan of the political side of Star Wars, and, and I understand why it's there. Like I get it; it's definitely there to add, it adds things to the overall overall universe. It's definitely has its you know its purpose, but I don't know. It's just I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I'm like, all right, come on, more fighting. <laughs> More fighting, more character development, you know, that kind of stuff. I like that. I don't really care about, like, oh, they're arguing over the trade shit. Like, who gives a fuck? Um, but anyway, overall, I'm going to give this movie a 7 out of 10. I think it's very uh, it's very entertaining at some parts, and, and then others it really drags. Um, good acting put in by Ewan McGregor and Natalie Portman and Qui-Gon, or um, Liam Neeson is Qui-Gon, and... Um, you know, some bad performances, perhaps, by, uh, um, uh, what's his, I forget the kid's name, but, you know, some people say he's bad, and, and also, uh, Smee Skywalker was pretty bad, in my opinion, as well as, uh, obviously, freaking Jar Jar, but <laughs> what are you gonna do about that? Um, so, yeah, if, if this is your first Star Wars movie, I, well, first off, I just spoiled the entire series to you, but if this is your first Star Wars movie, you know, and you're, you're like, eh, I'm not really into this that much. I mean, the fight was cool, but, like, all the other crap. Stick with it. It's going to be, it's going to get even rougher. Episode 2, and from what I, you know, from my last, my opinion from the last time I watched it was about two years ago, um, is even worse, like, by far, in my opinion. But stick with it, because episode 3 is amazing, and it's worth watching the first two, because it ties everything together really well. 
And then obviously four, five, and six are just some classics. I personally like uh, episode five, and I really like six. A lot of people don't like six much. I really like six, Return of the Jedi. Um, four is good too, but it's, I don't know, it's a little boring for me. Um, but, you know, it's just, the, the whole series in itself is definitely worth watching. So don't stop at this, don't stop at two, just keep going. It, it has some of the highest, you know, movie moments ever, in my opinion. So, uh, episode one, The Phantom Menace, is a seven out of ten. Thanks for watching.